But when we're all in a better place When we're all in a better place If the wind blows free From the treetops to the ocean Why can't we be in a better place? is metaphysical meetup with mark live here on the intuitive prospector page uh you can learn about what i'm doing uh writing podcasting teaching developing mentoring right here at marklanehart.com if you want and uh, i want to just give a big shout out to my team thanks for being here this morning uh, let me get over to the um page here make sure that we're broadcasting okay Let me know where you're from. Good morning to my uh, Patreon prospectors, my Diamond Sub subscribers. Appreciate you being here. We're going to have a, a, a good uh, conversation this morning about free thinking and something that I had posted uh, a little while ago. And I'll be doing some free readings uh, if you're interested. Um, let me get the uh, link to and over to the Facebook page. So bear with me here. I am a little under the weather, still recovering from my uh, surgery and uh, picked up a little bit of a cold along the way. Uh, so bear with me here. While we're doing that, grab your coffee, grab your tea. Let's see here. Let's get over to the Intuitive Prospector Facebook page. There we go. Okay. 
And then this way I can jump on and see who's joining me for this Friday. Happy summer to you. The summer solstice has taken place. Uh, here in Seattle, I'm here in West Seattle. Uh, we, we say that our summer actually starts July 5th. It does, June for us is January. We really have days where it gets into the 80s and then it gets down to the 50s. And so for as long as I've lived here, which has been since 1999, um, we always call June, January because it gets cold. It literally gets cold. And then the summer really kicks in July 5th. And we'll go through probably the end of October. We have really nice uh, late summers, uh, mid, mid to late October, sometimes even just early November. So um, that's pretty cool. All right. So let me grab the link. Uh, invite for the Zoom room. Copy invite link. We'll get that over to the prospector page here. So you can come in and have a chat with me if you want. Uh, and uh, let's see. Look for my avatar. I'll do a fun avatar today. Let's do. Wish there was an avatar of me holding a cup of coffee. I don't think there is. It's interesting how far we've come with now we have avatars of ourselves, right? Um, here, I'll do uh, me crying into some coffee cups. How's that? Paste the link. And then my admin team uh, that monitors your comments. So how this works, if you're new here, uh, make sure to hit that like or subscribe button. Um, we ask that, you know, if I start doing readings that we just have uh, one person, um, one reading per person. Uh, I usually look uh, for um, my star senders, my Patreon prospectors, or my um, Diamond Sub subscribers. Uh, you'll have a badge next to your name. And the best way to get a badge is to interact with the page, share the page out. Those that might, you know, uh, need a... Uh, a little bit of um, message today or uh, uplifting. But this morning, I uh, wanted to talk about free thinking. And this is something I was just having a conversation with my um, spiritual counselor that I meet with uh, every few weeks. And um, we were talking about um, actually a gentleman by the name of Carl, Carl Rogers, who is known as a, um, a, a psychologist, but he was really more on the humanistic side of, you know, um, working with people from an empathic standpoint, from a human standpoint, to be able to put yourself in other people's shoes. And one of the quotes that I came across from uh, this uh, Mr. Carl Rogers is, quote, the curious paradox is that when I accept myself just as I am, that I can change. And so a lot of us, you know, we go through um, changes in life, we go through uh, journeys of life, uh, we go through tragedies of life, we go through marriages of life, careers of life, uh, and, you know, years ago when I started to really go down a spiritual pathway, uh, not a religious pathway, there is a difference between spiritual and religious. Uh, for me, the spiritualism was really, you know, connecting to God in action, right? Where religion, they teach you, uh, well, not all religions, but the religion I was brought up in, Catholicism was taught that God was out up in the clouds or around on a big chair um, and it just, you know, they had to go to a priest and I just didn't understand that, you know, why would a God that's divine have to go through a third person or have to be able, like, why can't I connect to the divinity within me if I'm created in the image of God? And so years ago, I, I started to change from a spiritual standpoint or from a religious standpoint. Um, you know, I do know my scripture, uh, but I also know other books that are religious books as well. And what that did is it led me down to a spiritual pathway and so we go through all these changes, and as you know, I, as I've progressed along, I've gotten even more deeper in my spiritual pathways, to where you know I accept myself just as I am, and then that allows me to change, to to be able to become more free thinking. And one of the things for today's message is free thinkers. If you're a free thinker, if you're somebody that thinks outside the box, you don't feel like you have to fit in, because our society is about fitting in. Uh, some people refer to it as group think, which is a real psychological um, thing uh, where, you know, if you speak up and, you know, that the nail that sticks out the, 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 the farthest gets hammered down first, right? So there's group think. There is uh, people will refer to it as following the sheeple. Uh, people, you see it just with modern technology, with social media, how they're now starting to, do, to identify just how destructive social media has become. And so I try to make my platforms for positivity in all of my social media. But, you know, from a science standpoint, from a psychological standpoint, it's caused a lot of damage, especially to these younger generations. And so, you know, when you're a free thinker and you're stepping outside of the box, free thinkers will always appear crazy to those that haven't prospected deeper, 
haven't gone deeper into understanding whether it's meditation, whether it's uh, some sort of modality for like yoga to Tai Chi. I, pra I practice Qigong, life force energy, frequency vibration, uh, plant medicines, um, you know, connection to nature, uh, reading different books and authors or learning from people like Carl Rogers that talked about if I accept myself, who I am, where I'm at, uh, you know, fat, skinny, white, black, male, female, if I accept who I am, then that allows that intention and that vacuum to really then move into, I can change. And I, I've changed over the years greatly. Uh, I would say I've evolved but I also saw a lot of dysfunctional things along the way to where relationships change, family relationships change, because as a free thinker, you're always going to appear, uh, you're always going to appear to be crazy to those that haven't researched or prospected deeper in their own journey, right? And I always say, keep evolving. Don't stop evolving with your free thinking and, and, and stepping outside that box, not being part of the sheeple, not being part of the group think, not being part of you know, especially television today, it's if you literally break the word down television, it's to television. So if you're watching uh, a certain news show, uh, it's telling that vision, you know, whether it's uh, CNN or MSNBC or Fox News, it's to television. That's a program that you're watching, a program, you're being programmed. And so, you know, that's something that has really changed with, with me the last few years is stepping outside and away from the, the news cycles and turning more into music and more into writing, more into meditating. But when you are a free thinker, you're going to appear crazy to those that don't want to step out of their comfort zone. And that took me some years to realize because there was people that would, you know, oh, Mark, you're a psychic. Mark, you're a medium. Yeah, but it, it's to, you know, I'm not here to predict your future because the best part about your future is it comes one day at a time. It was my spiritual evolution. And don't ever apologize for evolving past people's comfort zones is what I would tell you. And I evolved past, and again, when I say I evolved, I'm not trying to portray myself as being better than somebody. I've just, as a free thinker, have moved into deeper pathways in prospecting deeper, discover those diamonds, not just the diamonds that were within, but the many gems and diamonds that are all around us. Things that we see, things that we don't see. I always you know, teach, if you're in my spiritual development group, um, I always remind them, you have three eyes in life, two to look one to see. This is called the third eye. This is your intuition. This is tied to the pineal gland. This is tied to the brain. The brain, which Einstein referred to as one of the most complex organisms in the entire solar system. It sits between two temples, right? Why are we called, I mean, these are eye orbitals, but these are the temp temporal bones, but something lies within your own temple. And within that own temple lies your own intuition, your own knowledge, your own wisdom, your own healing, your own transformation, your own divinity to find who and what God is. I no longer try to, I don't subscribe to trying to tell people what God is. I know that there is a God, a love, a presence, a higher consciousness of, you know, after we die, but I can't put a label to that. You know, people argue on even what Jesus looks like. Our history is not great, right? So, um, okay. I think I'm over on the page now. Let's just double check here. We'll share that. Okay. So let me get into the page, volume down. So good morning to Jane. Good morning to Katie. How are you? Thanks for being here. Hi, Claudia. Um, coming in from Germany. Uh, we have people tuning in from all over the world. So I try to be here on Fridays. If I'm not traveling or teaching, uh, I'm going to be more available as I move into my retirement uh, part of my life. Uh, that's something I've been working on a lot the last two months, ever since I had my uh, major life-changing surgery on April 17th, uh, you know, to repair my spine had collapsed pretty much in a nutshell l4 l5 collapsed on itself and so they had to put in a spacer of a half inch i'm a half inch taller and then fuse my l4 l5 with four screws and two titanium brackets everything's titanium now but uh, there's that song titanium I, I guess i'm titanium uh but it was cool because when i go through the airports i was wondering if i'd set the alarms off when you're traveling to mexico a few weeks ago uh, and it didn't. So even in, uh, in the Kabul airport, I thought for sure I'd set it off, but I didn't. So it just shows you the technology's come a long way. Instead of steel or metal, um, I had titanium in me. But that that surgery um, forced me down a new path, right? That's that transformation and accepting of that path. I don't really agree with the the, uh, the things that were done to put me on that path, but things happen for a reason. Things happen, um, and when they do, and those doors open. 
things move very quickly. That means that the universe is in alignment with you, that it's, it's your vibration and your frequency have matched up to where doors just open. And I'm sure some of you can relate to that. Some of you can understand that, geez, everything just happened seamlessly. There was no pause. We have friends that are getting ready to move and all of the doors for them have, have opened. And that's what I told them. I said, the universe is working with you. It's, you know, just paying attention when those doors close. Um, you know, when you're trying to force something through an ego or through a want or through, you know, your free will and those doors just, you keep running into that closed door. It's like, that's the universe not working with you. And sometimes you just got to do what Buddha says is just step back, take your hands off the wheel, Jesus, take the wheel or Buddha, you know, let that shit go and see how things progress and how the universe then starts working with your energy and your frequency. And so I'm working on retirement, uh, you know, a lot of paperwork and a lot of interviews and a lot of medical documentation, but this has given me a new pathway to be here. But I try to be here on Fridays if I can, uh, 10 a.m. live Pacific Standard Time here in Seattle, Washington. And then at 11 a.m., you can go over to my YouTube channel and you can get everything right here at marklinehart.com. Uh, YouTube channel then uh, is another uh, another episode of Metaphysical Meetup with Mark over on my YouTube channel. And that that premieres at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and there's a lot of good, great videos over there that you can go and, and join the uh, almost 18,000 subscribers. So, um, but, it, you know, I try to be here to connect, to be in service, to inspire, to motivate, to think outside the box, to encourage, to maybe, you know, just show a little kindness. Kindness can change a person's um, day. It can change a person's thought process. Um, and that's where I, you know, I, I give back and, you know, I don't charge uh, you know, for my readings live when I'm doing this. So the Zoom link is out there. Um, if, if we end up, when I start to read, if we end up start doing mediumship, you'll have to come into the Zoom room live. Uh, but I just, you know, ask that if you get a reading that you just, uh, just um, we'll get into more details on that. But I look for my star senders. That helps me buy my coffee each and every week. My Patreon uh, prospectors, that's my subscription service where you get more access. Uh, and uh, my Diamonds Hub subscribers here on Facebook. And you'll know because you have a little badge next to you. So good morning, OB, Santana. Good morning, B Princess. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. So today's message, we're talking about free thinking. And when you are a free thinker and you're challenging yourself to, to, to know thyself, to think, therefore I am, is to really move into the thought process of why am I here? What is my purpose? What are my passions? What's the plan for being here? Because sometimes we're here for a long time and sometimes we're only here for a brief moment, right? Uh, and I've seen everything in between. And so it really, you know, it just helps you to, you know, decide where you want to go with your journey. Uh, you may not be religious. You may not be spiritual. That's okay. But you may have questions of what's the whole purpose of life? Why am I here? And that's free thinking. You're starting to think outside the box, outside of what a program may tell you, what your learned behaviors may have been from uh, your upbringing or a religious indoctrine, also called dogmas, dogmas and, you know, that control the way you think. Uh, cognitive dissonance is a, is a way to get people to get in line to how people think. And, and free thinkers can be, you know, to, you know, institutions or systems or control, those people are, you know, some, sometimes a, a threat to status quo, you know, yeah, that's why I love Star Wars, right? Star Wars was the re the, rebe the rebellion standing up against the galactic empire, right? And, you know, these rebellious leaders were free thinkers, right? And even our forefathers that created the United States, you could actually look at them as the rebels in Star Wars to say, we don't want to be part of the uh, English galactic empire at that time, filled with religious dogmas, filled with religious doctr indoctrination, filled with civil wars to come over to this new land and say, we want to have a new thought process and create a constitution and, uh, you know, start to free think with separation of church versus state, right? Because they had those experiences. So free thinkers can, you know, be viewed as being crazy or being a threat to a system. But I would challenge you to, to move forward with free thinking because you're going to unlock a lot of doors um, that you didn't even know were there. Uh, you know, that were dormant, you know, for me, many years, probably 27 years of age, I didn't realize how dormant my intuitive abilities were, my psychic abilities, my mediumship, my spirituality, my healing. And, you know, now that I'm in my fifties, um, it's, it's quite exciting to see just how much I don't know, right? How much, how many doors remain closed that I have not yet opened. 
Um, I talked about this a couple episodes ago about in science, when we look at science, because we want to use science, and that's what I love about spirituality and science, is that they, they actually work with each other, not against each other. You'll see that in religions, you know, if you just take the top 10 religions of, around the world, a lot of them will not work with science because science is trying to prove or disprove things based on belief, based on hope. And what I love about being a spiritualist is we can work with science to try to understand what we don't understand, right? We think as humans that we're very smart. We are, we're capable of making great things from a guitar to this technology, to Star Wars, to, you know, microphones that you can hear me on. But at the same time, science to date has only been proven through mathematics about 4%. So we use mathematics as a way to, through the scientific method to, you know, say that this science is correct. So if you just base that on a hundred percent tile, 4% of what we know based on mathematics and based on scientific method and fact, that means that there's 96% of things that we don't know. They can be opinionated. They can be theories. They could be hypothesis. They could be peer reviewed and peer led, but not, you know, substantiated as science facts. So that's 96%. And as we progress through our roaring twenties, uh, we're going to, you know, I think through AI, robotics, our technology, as it continues to advance, we'll start to become more scientifically, spiritually connected. Um, you know, think of terms of energy, think of terms of frequency and vibration, things that Nikola, uh, Nik Nikola Tesla talked and taught about all the time is unlocking that universe, right? Because there's a lot of universe out there. And just because we don't see it here doesn't mean we can't see it here, right? So there's a lot of things around us that we don't see. Um, you could take it, the microscope, the telescope, uh, you could even talk about the, the, the UAP phenomenon that's taking place. We have technology now where we can capture using high speed cameras, objects that are zipping by us or in our, that are in our space, but we don't actually see it here because they're moving so fast. And so we're, you know, that technology is, is, is opening up new doorways and pathways of understanding metaphysically changing the laws of physics and how we understand physics, multidimensional wormhole i mean there's just so much that's going on in our roaring 20s and i said the roaring 20s you know if you've been following my journey following my work um i said that the roaring 20s were going to be historically looked back at as a very transformative a very turbulent time because transformation doesn't just take place with everybody you know with a group thing saying hey we want to transform you're going to see some battles taking place i even talked about a next american civil war where people want to move forward in history 80%, you know, history is statistically 70%, but I'm thinking more 80% these days where people want to move forward. They want to have an easier life. They want to have good healthcare. They want to have technology where robots will come in and start driving us and cooking for us and, uh, you know, taking care of our children in the future. That's the Jetsons kind of thing, flying cars, right? That is progression, but there's also a mindset out there that doesn't want to progress because they're fearful or, um, you know, it goes against their religious uh, belief system. You know, one of the things that some, one of my mentors said to me, you know, the times have not changed, the times have changed, but the mindset of free thinking has changed drastically, it has progressed more, and it's advanced more. And it's, you know, if we go back to the 1600s and go to the Salem witch trials, remember religious indoctrination, if you didn't conform, they would kill you, right? So you had to conform if you wanted to live your life, but they didn't they didn't uh, kill witches back in the 1600s, even though they said they were witches, they burned women, right? And so that mindset is still there. And we, we, I'm sure you know of people, friends, family, colleagues that have that way of thinking, and that's fine. They're just not on that level. But perhaps you, like myself, have become a free thinker. Um, you've taken yourself through higher education. Higher education, I believe, you know, whether it's vocational past high school, I don't, I don't think everybody needs to go to college. Some of the most brilliant people I've met have no college education whatsoever. Uh, but when you progress, you know, we go through our, our, our standard of education to learn, to read, to write, to speak. And then at some point we can go, you know, for me, I went to the military, the U.S. Coast Guard, was trained vocationally and then got my higher education while I was in the Coast Guard. But when you open up these doorways of education and knowledge, it leads you to wisdom. And that gets you thinking differently. It gets you to become a free thinker. But just remember, not everybody's going to be on the same page as you. And that's fine. That's just the human condition. But we have a lot of opinion. We have a lot of judgment. We have a lot of people that want to control. You know, some of you, I'm sure, uh, have narcissists in your family or people that want to gaslight you. Um, and that took me a, a couple of years to really work through those challenges. 
Uh, but I'm glad today that, you know, that I can be a free thinker and, and come on here on Facebook Live or YouTube, knowing that there will be opinions, there will be judgments. Uh, oh, you know, this guy, the, the, it's like, no, just follow your journey, follow your light, be the lighthouse of what your light is telling you to do. Be a free thinker, never apologize for evolving past people's comfort zones, because that's what free thinking does. It evolves you past people's comfort zones. And if, the, if you're not in somebody's comfort zone, then a lot of times you're going to be rejected. That's why we talk about, you know, I'm pretty much the black sheep of my family, um, but you're going to be rejected for being a free thinker. And that's a hard place and sometimes a lonely place to be, but you're evolving yourself and never apologize for moving past people's comfort zones. So there's also one of the sayings is once manipulation stops, rejection begins. And there's a lot of manipulation in our world. You can see it right now with just the whole political clown show that's taking place in the United States. I, I, I don't get into politics. I'm an independent voter, um, and I believe in the Constitution because uh, I took an oath to the Constitution. But you can see just the narratives, the gaslighting, and how people are believing things that are just not true or factual. They've created their own reality. And then down the road, that's going to create conflict at some point. That's unfortunate, but if you look at our history, it's not surprising. So we are a species filled with violence and war and competition and um, and we'll be heading down that pathway again in our Roaring Twenties, but it is the Roaring Twenties of transformation, and history will look back at this and go, what the heck were they doing? What were they thinking? So buckle up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interesting journey. So again, today's message is if you're a free thinker, just remember, if you're thinking and you're doing things, that's your calling, your journey, trust in your higher, your higher self, that higher voice, and it doesn't meet other people's you know, paradigm or doesn't meet their their belief systems, they're going to look at you as crazy. And, and, you know, for those of us that are free thinkers that do this work uh, intuitively or spiritually, I've, I've had that conversation with myself, if I'm being transparent and honest with you, like, am I losing my sense of reality? Am I, you know, as I walk between worlds, this is the book that I, I, I've added to called Between Worlds Reflections, because I'm reflecting on what it is to be a person that's living in this incarnate physical world and then be able to access this world that's not necessarily seen with the human eye. It's seen with the third eye, it's felt, it's known. Uh, we've received, we receive signs, symbols, synergy, which is your energy and the energy that's all around you that blends and connects. And of course, the synchronicities. I, you know, ever since I started this journey, you can't see off camera, but right below the, the camera here, I've got one, two, three, four. I got four stacks of dimes about this high because the dimes are a symbol for me. now. In the real world, logically, somebody dropped it. But when I see a dime, it reminds me of my brothers and it triggers my mindset, which is a communication of free thinking and higher self to be like, hey, my brothers are still very much alive. They are just letting me know. And it's a simple dime, right? But logically, we know somebody dropped it. But for me, that's a sign. And when I get a dime, I collect it. And I've got four stacks as a reminder. We call it pennies from heaven. I just get dimes because two nickels make a dime and two nickels are my brothers that are in the spirit world. So, you know, when you start to free think, when you start to evolve with your consciousness and you expand not only your, your thoughts and your beliefs, you expand your auric field. You start to connect to um, different things. And again, I wouldn't go down the path of saying, you know, oh, you're connecting to evil things. Again, that's getting into that religious dogma and that religious doctrine. A lot of times what we don't understand leads us to fear. It leads us back to that place where we felt comfortable and safe. And that's fine. But when you're prospecting and becoming a free thinker, you're going to have to challenge yourself to push your past some uncomfortability out of your comfort zone, because it's out of the comfort zone that you're going to actually learn and grow and heal and transform the best. So the analogy that I like to use all the time as a reminder for myself, and again, I share my experiences, my soul adventures with you, not to have you agree or disagree with me, because we can always agree to disagree and be respectful of one another. But to share these soul adventures to say, you know, I have done a lot of soul adventures and, and digging and prospecting to understand that there's just so much out there that we just don't understand. And when I'm uh, taking that leap of faith, when I'm leaving the nest trying to learn how to fly, there is that fear of wanting to go back to that safe spot. But you're not going to grow in that comfort zone. It's the uncomfortability zone is where you grow. And what I like to remind myself is, is what the caterpillar called the end of the world. The caterpillar is like, what's happening? I'm, I'm going into this cocoon, I'm, I'm being this metamorphosis goo, uh, if you will, like deliquifying, like it, that would be pretty scary if you think about it. Put yourself in the shoes of a caterpillar going into metamorphosis in the cocoon. All of a sudden you're in the dark, your body's changing. And so what the caterpillar would call the end of the world 
you go through that transformation and through that cocoon and try to struggle to get out. And all of a sudden you emerge successfully out of the cocoon and you're the butterfly. So what the one aspect of you call the end of the world, the new aspect of you and a new body and a new way and a new mindset is a whole new world. So this is the end of the world to this is a whole new world. And we talked about this last week, Ross Dom, uh, Ross Dom, Dom Ross um, talked about um, that this world is the womb, that when we incarnate out of our, when we are born from our mothers, that really our journey starts not from the birth, but from the learning experiences, the education of life, which is the school of life. Whether you go through higher education within life or you, you have no education, that's fine. Um, but he talked about how this plane is the womb. And I, that episode is over, uh, going to be starting here in just a few minutes, about a half hour over my YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to get that, um, get that link, I'll, I'll put the link in the, the comment section as well. Again, you can get everything right here at marklaneheart.com, uh, the book, uh, the latest podcast. We had a fun podcast. We have no podcast this week, but we have a new podcast next week. Uh, I think I'm going to speak. And I don't think we have a guest for next week. I'll have to uh, hit up my, uh, PR person. Oh, speaking of which, she's on right now. Hi, Colleen. Um, so, uh, but we have some guests for July, but you can get everything there. You can book a reading with me. You can check the podcast out. You can read my latest articles, The Diamonds of Being Alone and, and Consciousness and the Pineal Gland, things that I write about, that free thinking uh, aspect. Um, and then you can go to my subscribe store um, at, at marklanehart.com. And from there, you can get to all of the um, Patreon Prospector, Diamonds Hub, Insight Timer, Learn It Live, YouTube. Uh, all that stuff. And I'm uh, making a new batch of Lavender Love. It is the summer. So I'm, I, I sell to the local stores called Lavender Love. So I'm getting ready to do that. Uh, Colleen says, no guests. Okay. So I guess I'm doing a show on Wednesday. I guess I have to figure out what I'm going to be talking about. But that's the beauty of having your own podcast, right? Is, uh, um, you know, if you don't, if you don't have a guest, I can talk about something for an hour. And so you can get the podcast Inspired Living wherever you get your uh, podcast from. We're streaming through all of the major platforms now. So, um, if you want, uh, I'll grab the link for the subscribers uh, for Patreon, or not for Patreon, for YouTube. Oh, I guess today, as of today, we're over 18,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel, Soul Adventures. And uh, Oh, I apologize. The Zoom link never went in. Hold on real quick. Let me... Uh, there we go. Let me hit enter. I forgot to hit enter. Okay, so the Zoom link there... Uh, is now out. Uh, we'll get ready for readings. Uh, look for my avatar with me with a cup of coffee, just crying into the coffee. And then um, I put the uh, YouTube link if you want to subscribe or catch the um, the 11 a.m. Uh, that's every Friday now. And that that's talking about uh, this plane being the womb. But we come here to learn. And that plane, this plane, this physical plane, some would say, you know, it is one of many, if you, for those of you that, watch, that have Apple TV, it's watched, that have watched Dark Matter, or those of you that have Netflix that's watched Three Body Problem, we really are having conversations about, is this reality um, a matrix style? Are we living in some sort of uh, virtual reality? You know, are we one of many series of us? It's very fascinating that for some people, they won't comprehend that. They haven't had the experiences or the grief or the loss or the near death uh, or the deep meditations or working with plant medicine to be, have an open mind to that. But it's funny that a lot of movies that are coming out now is on these theories that, you know, scientists and psychologists have been talking about for many, many years. Einstein talked about multidimensional uh, string theory, wormholes, you know, and that would then change the universe because now the universe isn't quite as big as we have the ability to bend space and time and go through wormholes uh, like Interstellar. If you've seen the movie, uh, movie Interstellar, fascinating uh, movie, um, our universe becomes more connected and it means that we're not alone in the universe, right? And some people will not be able to accept that, that we are not alone, uh, either in the universe or even here on our planet. Again, going back to what we think we know, we know less about our own oceans. The Pacific Ocean has more water than all the landmass combined on the planet. We're 70% water, uh, but we know more about our moon, right? So there's a lot of things deep down in our planet we don't know. There's a lot of things in our oceans we don't know. And that comes back to that 4% of scientific fact that we have actually confirmed and that 96% that we're going to continue to learn. I think in, as the years move forward, that 4% will increase to somewhere maybe 5%, 7%, which is a lot, right, to actually confirm. Because we say that spirituality is what physics yet hasn't confirmed through the scientific process. And so um, if you have intuition, if you have empathy, uh, if you are a psychic, if you are a medium, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not, 
and you haven't yet un unlocked that door, there's always time to do so. But you're going to look at people like myself as free thinkers or as, as light workers, as healers, as maybe being crazy or not of this world. And that's fine because I'm not going to apologize for growing outside of your own comfort zone. And so that's today's message. So I hope that that resonates with you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get into some readings. Uh, let me see if I see your comments here. Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hi, Tara Angel. Um, Claudia says, I've been down with COVID this week, and I was also wondering what the plan was for that. I mean, why right now? Why COVID? But for some reason, it had to be right. Yeah, Claudia, that's a, you know, we think COVID is gone. It's not. It will be a part of society moving forward. It is part of the new um, global paradigm of infection that we all, you know, I had it um, not at the height of it, but I got it when it was actually I got it in May of 2022 after it was coming down. So yeah, you have to ask yourself, why right now? Why is this taking place? And for me, again, things take place that we don't want to, right? We're creatures of habit. And when these things take place, there's usually something to be learned from that. It's usually in that struggle. Remember I talked about the caterpillar, uh, you know, I've been, I've been nine weeks post-surgery and I've, it's been a tough nine weeks. I'd rather go through my boot camp, my Coast Guard boot camp again, versus what I've gone through for this back surgery. But when we go through these uh, painful, trying, transformative times, it grows you. And, you know, uh, we call them life lessons because not all lessons are fun, but the life lesson takes you out of a, your comfortability zone, for one. You're in a, um, you know, an ability to learn because you realize that your health is your greatest wealth, not money. You know, um, Steve Jobs talked about the, the five things, and one of them was it doesn't matter how rich you are or how poor you are, you're gonna you're gonna go into the exact same grave uh, of dirt, whether you're cremated or buried, as the person that's filthy rich to the homeless person that has nothing. So it gives you perspective, Claudia, is what I'm saying. It helps you to grow. So that COVID's happening right now. And again, there's, you know, there's a, a, a life lesson from that. If you choose to have that, if your free will allows you to say, what is my free thinking? That broader perspective of, okay, I've had COVID. I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Maybe it's something that you need to change in your, your way of thinking and your health. I mean, it's only going to fit for you. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get some water. But what we can do, Claudia, is for anybody that's on with me today, <clears throat> if you want to sit, hit a bunch of hearts, we can always set intention and hold space for others. Holding space is, <clears throat> is quantum thinking to say, Claudia's in Germany. I'm here in Seattle. People that that's a long ways away, <clears throat> but we're connected via digital. We're connected via the, the digital transformation, the digital connection, the metaverse, if you will. So what we can do is if you would, uh, for anybody that's watching, go ahead and hit that heart button. And we're going to send a bunch of hearts. <clears throat> I'm going to start start the process. And Claudia, I want you to see these hearts coming in. And you can throw some likes if you want or some cares. We'll throw some cares in there too. And send that energy to you regardless of distance. It's called distance healing. It's called holding space for others. And we're, you know, if you would have said that 30 years ago, people again would look at you and say, oh, you're crazy. You know, the thought of prayer. Prayer does not have distance. Um, you know, it's like people, you know, I try to teach people that heaven, heaven isn't a location somewhere. It's a vibration that once we are attuned, once we vibrate through death, we return to that source. But it's not, you know, I was always taught that it was this physical place up in the clouds, up in the sky, based on my religion. But I was like, I never see it. I, I don't know of it. And you can't go up or down on a round planet. It's metaphysically impossible. So you have to think terms broader. You have to think in terms of multidimensional frequency. So heaven isn't a location. Heaven is a frequency that we attune back to, like a big radio station. Think of a big radio that's the universe. And on that dial, just as all the many radio stations that we have, we tune in. And when we die, we tune into that frequency that's right for us, where we're supposed to go back to the source. But in that place, that's what I love, uh, What Dreams May Come. Have you ever seen that movie, What Dreams May Come with Robin, the, the late, great Robin Williams? That, I thought, was a very insightful aspect of how we can visually see the afterlife, right? And, you know, I didn't, you know, again, if I'm being honest and transparent, I never really thought about death and dying on a personal level. And I worked in it, the U.S. Coast Guard, the U.S. Fire Service. Uh, I was surrounded by a lot of death and dying professionally, but it wasn't until my brothers and my father-in-law passed, 
father-in-law passed into the spirit world around the same time that I really started to question my own mortality. What is death? What is dying? Ram Dass talked about dying is the most important moment in any incarnation. And what he means by incarnation is when you come out of the womb of your mom's womb, breathing liquid into the physical plane of this womb, breathing air, your death, whatever that, that may be, whenever that may be, is the most important moment of your incarnation. So that tells me that this is a learning opportunity and that there's more fun stuff ahead of me. Because I had a hard time when I, you know, people talk about death and dying, that you go up and to heaven and there be, there be many different opinions and theories and, um, you know, you're going to have many mansions in heaven. That sounds great, but it sounds kind of boring, right? You know, you're just going to sit there on a cloud and play a harp and enjoy your mansions until you choose to come back and do it again. So we don't know, right? That's the greatest question of mankind, of what happens after death. But I really started to think about it uh, more than I ever did. So, uh, and that's not for everybody, right? Sometimes death can scare people. But from my understanding of my journey, my education and, and knowledge, death is not to be feared. Death is just the next progression. And when you become a free thinker, you're going to have these questions. You're going to start to question your own mortality, your own uh, reality. Um, and that can, you know, drive a few people insane. And I've seen it. So get a good teacher. <coughs> Excuse me. Still getting over this cold. Find a good teacher. Find a good mentor. Take some classes. Start to meditate. Start to connect to something bigger than yourself. If you're just starting the process, it can be quite overwhelming, quite um, frightening. Uh, if you have questions, you can always reach out to me at marklanehart.com because uh, that's what I do. I help people. Um, I develop people and mentor people because I've gone through it. I've gone through a lot of the lessons and a lot of the, the healing and a lot of the dark work to get to where I'm at to speak to this today. So um, hi, Elena. Hi, Adriana. Good to see you both. Uh, Esther, hello to you. Hi, Pam. Hi, Katie. Hello, hello. So for Claudia, one more time, let's throw some hearts and cares up. So she can get over her COVID, but take this bigger perspective, Claudia, is what I'm saying is the, the, the lesson repeats until it completes and what we resist persists. And when we're outside of our comfort zone and in that uncomfortability, that's where you're going to learn what this lesson was for you. And, and again, if you're, you know, being sick with COVID, which killed millions of people, uh, it's not to be, you know, always there on the side of safety, go see your doctors, your healthcare providers. Uh, and I hope that you get healthy, but if everybody wants to just throw some hearts and cares, uh, Claudia's way, that's our way of sending intentions, holding space, and sending distant healing. So I'll do it one more time for you, Claudia. So a couple hearts, a couple cares, you can throw a couple likes, and that's for Claudia in Germany. So thanks for being here. And calling, sending healing energy to you, Claudia. I love it. Letting us say hello. She's saying thanks, everyone. So this is what we do in the digital aspect. This is what we do in the quantum way of thinking, because we're not physically in an in-person location. We're connecting through the digital construct, which is crazy. It's Star Trek, right? But that's our evolution of moving from three-dimensional to four-dimensional quantum way. Even the quantum computing is now a part of our reality. 3D printing, uh, something that we saw in Star Trek. Oh, just a pr hey, printer, print this up, print it up. Well, that's now in my back. The reality of what is in my back is 3D printed titanium made specifically for me. So we're going to see some more cool things happening, but along the way, it's also you're going to see people that do not want to have that free thinking, don't want to be open minded, don't want to know themselves and just be a group think, be a sheeple, follow the programming, follow the television, follow the politics. That's fine. That's their free will and choice. But never apologize because you've evolved past their comfort zone is what I would say to you, because you will get a lot of opinions and judgments and lost relationships based on your ability to free think and to be open about that. It took me a couple of years to analyze before I actually came out and said professionally that I was a psychic or a medium because I was worried and cared more about what other people, friends, family, colleagues thought than my own journey to know thyself and to be a free thinker and to never apologize for my evolving past their, their comfort zones. So my mantra is, again, if you don't risk it, you'll never get the biscuit. If you don't risk it, you'll never see the biscuit. So sometimes you have to take a leap of faith. And the only way to learn how to fly is to leave the nest. And you may splat and, and you know not fly that first time. But it's also consistency. It's also discipline, getting up. Um, the Japanese proverb, get knocked down seven, stand up eight. Eventually, it's going to take, you know, um, uh, Edison talked about this with the light bulb. He failed 10,000 times, but it just takes that one time to get it right, and it changes the world, and it changes your world. 
So, okay. So Zoom link is out. Um, I'll go ahead and open up the Zoom room if you want to come in and have a chat, sip over some coffee. Let me know what's going on, see how I can help. The Zoom room is now open. Again, how this works, one reading per person. If you are a subscriber, I'm looking for a badge next to your name. Uh, and you, you get the badges by subscribing to my Diamond Sub. Or I know, I'll know that you're a Patreon prospector. That link is also, I'll put that link if you want to join my Patreon prospectors. Let me grab that link for you real quick. Um, and then, of course, you'll have a badge next. You've been following my work for a while. Um, I'll know you. And uh, I've got um, 14 decks today. Uh, I changed a few of them out, so we've got a few new decks. Uh, so you can tell me to pick a number uh, deck, number if you want. Um, you can ask to pick out a, a book reading, or you can just ask me for my own intuition or thoughts based on, on you know, what you think um, you might need. So hi, Michelle. So a couple of yawns. I'm hopefully, as I progress and get better, I'm, I am doing better with my healing from the surgery and I'm getting more energy. Uh, I was actually able to work out for the first time yesterday, so that felt nice. And be down almost 40 pounds, so that's nice too. Um, I'm hoping to start my experience the etheric. Um, I'm thinking Monday nights. Um, I haven't really carved it out, but it's my way of teaching people. Uh, it won't be live necessarily through here. You'll, you'll get a notification through the Patreons, through the Diamonds Hub subscribers. And then the Intuitive Prospector page, if you uh, liked or followed the page, um, it's called Experience the Etheric, and it's the ABCs of spiritualism. And what I this is something that I've developed myself. Uh, the A stands for attunement. The B stands actually the B has two meanings: blending and breathing, because breathing is a big, powerful component to connect. And then of course the C is connecting to something bigger than yourself. And the Etheric is something that is discarnate, which means it's not of matter. So don't get into the fear based of angels and demons and all of that. It's about connecting to the etheric, which is sometimes your higher self. It could also be your family, your friends, your fur babies that have moved from life into death, but are very much a thought away. So, oh my gosh, I got the hiccups. That must mean I must be ready to work. All right. So again, today's message, if you're a free thinker, just remember, free thinkers will always be considered crazy to others. Keep evolving and never apologize for moving past people's comfort zones is today's message. All right, here we go. Good morning. May I get a quote for today? You bet. You know what? Let's give you a quote. I love that, Adriana. Um, so you can ask for colors. You can come into the Zoom room live. Uh, you can ask for a deck number, one through 14. And so I'm going to give you a quote from Carl Rogers, who we were just talking about today. If you don't know who Carl Rogers is, look him up. He was a humanist psychologist, and he really worked. And... Let me see a good quote for you. Okay, here you go. This is from Carl, Carl Rogers. And then Elaine, I'll get to you next. A card of your choice. Okay. So Carl Rogers said this, in quote, in my early professional years, I was asking the question, how can I treat or cure or change this person? <clears throat> now... I would phrase the question in this way. How can I provide a relationship which this person may use for his own personal growth? So it's <coughs> it's meeting people where they're at, not saying you're above a person or below a person, because there are people that do think that, unfortunately, because of the power they have or how many followers they have or how much money they have. But at the end of the day, death comes to us all and you're going into the same place. Um, and it's really about meeting people, Adriana. Uh, so it's interesting you asked for a quote today. So that's obviously something you need to hear. Uh, there's that synchronicity or that coincidence, but I'll read it again. This is from Carl Rogers. If you don't know him, look him up, a pioneer uh, in, in psychology, which is all about the brain. In my early professional years, I was always asking the question, how can I treat or cure or change this person? Because people want to try to cure us, try to change us. Now I would, I would phrase the question in this way. How can I provide a relationship which this person may use for his own or her own personal growth? <coughs> I apologize for the coughing. So good morning to my mom who just joined. Hi, mom. <coughs> Happy summer. She's saying good morning to everybody. 
again, I apologize. I have a cough. I don't know. It could be the allergies too. It is summer. So uh, Adriana, does that resonate? Does that quote make sense for where you're at on your journey about meeting somebody where they're at versus trying to change them or cure them or treat them? Because we, as impasse, we want to try to help people too, right? We want to try to treat people. I did healthcare most of my life, uh, you know, from Coast Guard, fire service to actual healthcare for the federal government. And it was always about, you know, trying to help people. But sometimes we don't need to help people. We just need to meet them where they're at and create a relationship based on their perspective, based on putting yourself in their shoes and walking that mile in their shoes, right? So I hope that helps. All right, Elena, card of my choice. <clears throat> my choice, huh? Well, I keep coming back to this deck. Okay, this is the uh, um, spiritual deck, uh, one of the many decks I have. So remember, um, we're working in the quantum aspect now. So uh, Elena, um, I'm going to start setting the intent. I'm going to put the energy in, start shuffling. And what you need to do, uh, Elena, is when you hear the word stop, type it on your keyboard and then hit enter. And that's the card that I'll pick once I see it. That allows you, your free will and your choice to come into the quantum digital aspect and um, pick a card. So I'm shuffling right now. This is for Elena. Uh, one of my followers. Thanks for being a follower or a subscriber. And when I hear it, when I see the word stop in the comments, then I'll pull that card. That makes, that lets me know that you're engaging with me and that you haven't gone off the video because some people come and go and that's fine. Hi, Maureen. Good to see you. And then Colleen, you're on deck. So we're opening up to questions. If you have questions, you can get a quote, you can get a book read, you can get a card. So we're just waiting on Elena Flores. Stop. Thank you, dear. You got it. I'll get you out. I'll get you all educated up on this. Okay, so this is the no card. So this is what the card looks like, the no. So it's put, you know, talk to the hand, the no card. The number is 52. So this has a number seven energy to it. So five plus two is seven from a numerology standpoint. The seven represents truth. Seek truth, find truth, hear truth, know truth. Not always fun to do. But the card says this. No is a very strong word that suggests stop. Think again before any action is taken. That can be a very wise use of the so-called pregnant pause. I, I like to say, I don't say pregnant pause. I say practice pause, practice the pause. Take a breath in, let the mind clear. It gives time for gestation, leading to birth of the right decision. That's called intuition. And you actually increase your intuition through the power of breath and calming the mind. There is often a need to establish a good balance in life between the use of words no and yes. Overuse of the word yes may lead to some difficult uh, situations. Taking on more than you can realistically be achieved leads to letting people down by not fulfilling commitments and getting a reputation for it. The outcome being that that offer, offers disappear. Overuse of the word no can lead to people stop asking or inviting you to join their project or their activity because you're, you're always a naysayer, right? No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. This appearance of this card suggests that you need to find a balance between the use of these two very important words. And the five in numerology is freedom, love, and adventure. The two is being at peace with what is. So there's a balance for you right now, Elena, on finding, not saying yes all the time, not saying no all the time, but finding a balance for what is right for you. And if you don't know how to do that, practice the pause, take a deep breath in, ask yourself the question. If it comes back three times, that's usually a confirmation, the power of three. And I believed in the power of three long before I got into spiritualism or, um, you know, psychic or mediumship. I, I, I saw this in the Coast Guard days. I saw this in the fire service days. Things would happen in threes. And we'd always say, why do they happen in threes? Three is such a very powerful number, very spiritual number as well. So um, does that make sense, Elena, for you? We're interacting live in the quantum connection of the Intuitive Prospector page here on Facebook Live, Metaphysical Meetup with Mark. I got to get a haircut. My hair is getting long. Almost get into a ponytail. All right. So, Colleen, um, I, okay, I need a card, need some motivation, butt kicking, feel like I'm in a stagnant energy lately. Yeah, and we do. We flow, we get stagnant, we get that plateau. So, the best way to do that is one, generate the, the breath, get out into nature or bring nature into you, surround yourself with some plants. Uh, you know, so, you know, we get stagnant, take, a, take an Epsom salt bath. Uh, move into an attitude for gratitude, be in service to help somebody out. That can lift your energy up, Colleen. And so the card for you today, <clears throat> so we're going to do the allow deck. I allow deck, okay? So um, same thing, Elena's saying, wow, makes super sense. I think 
I say yes too much and afraid to say no. Yeah, don't be afraid of saying no, but don't say no all the time, right? So Colleen, you're now in the quantum room. Set an intent when you hear the word stop in your mind as I shuffle, hit stop, type it on your keyboard and hit enter. And that's a card that we'll talk about. Working in a quantum quant construct, love it. This is for Colleen. If you want a card, let me know. Hi, Kathy. Oh, I'm sorry, Kath, sorry. The Kathy Riley, I stopped, thank you. Thank you, my friend. Ah, <laughs> you're gonna love this. Um, this is the, uh, the synchronicities of it, the coincidences of it. I allow myself to be patient with, with the stagnant energy. So this is the plant that has been, you know, this is the seedling that's been planted and it grows slowly. And, uh, you know, I just planted my garden. Uh, so I know that this takes time, but we, we plant our garden, but in order for our garden to grow, we have to nourish it. We have to weed it. We have to water it. We have to give it sun. So your stagnant energy means that you're staying in the house too much. Your mindset of being a mom to two beautiful children is great, but you need to take a break for yourself. And a lot of times that can just be getting out into nature, but it's saying, I allow myself to be patient. I allow myself to be patient. I allow myself to be patient. So go ahead and say that a few times, start that vibration. Thoughts become words, words become vibration and actions and energy, energy and action, if you will, spirit in action, if you will. I allow myself to be patient. Okay. Hi, Joe. Blackwell is watching. Thanks for tuning in. All right. So any more questions for today? If not, um, you can go catch my YouTube show right now that's premiering on my YouTube channel uh, where we talked about this plane is the womb. Uh, I'll be back next Friday, um, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for another metaphysical meetup if I don't have any more requests. Uh, the Zoom room link is there if you want to join. But if I can start to do the experience etheric, that's what I was talking about earlier and I got sidetracked by your question. Um, the experience etheric is going to be, I think I'm going to try to do it on Monday, either late afternoon or um, evening, depending on the audience, because there's a lot of people that I have that follow um, the work and the journey over in England. Uh, but it's going to be a way of um, doing tools to ascend, to breathe, to blend, to connect, to experience something bigger than yourself and not to be scared of this higher self or a spirit person. Could be a fur baby, could be a friend, could be a family member. It all just depends, right? Um, so I'm hoping to build that out and record some new tracks on uh, uh, Learn It Live and Insight Timer for healing. I just, with this surgery and paperwork for retirement, I've just been so bogged down by that. But hopefully... I'm going to get some more free time and enjoy my summer, uh, enjoy what this next phase of retirement looks like for me, and then be more in service. I'm um, doing a lot of online services, um, so you can get those notifications if you're um, uh, at markwainhart.com or one of my subscribers. I'll be posting those there as well. So I don't see anybody coming to the Zoom room. So um, again, if you want to come to the Zoom room and have a live chat, we can do that. I'm happy to do that. I forgot to bring my telephone up again, um, but you can always contact me. Uh, via phone. My business line is 206-588-0661. Uh, don't call it right now because I didn't bring it upstairs with me. I totally spaced it. And then, of course, you can always reach me at marklanehart.com. Uh, we'll be on the air for a new podcast. I don't know what the topic is. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm hosting. Uh, and now I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of, kind of interesting because now I can set the intent. What do I want to talk about? I'll probably talk about the spiritual journey on Wednesday, and then we'll have a new guest in July. So, all right. Hi, Donna. Colleen says, yes, need, yes, need lots of patience. Allow myself to be patient. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, Colleen. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of the journey and uh, joining the community on Fridays here at 10 a.m. Again, if you want to join the community, I hit that like or subscribe button uh, for the Intuitive Prospector. And um, I'm here on Fridays at 10 a.m. live. YouTube channel over at 11 a.m. Same on Fridays. I have the hiccups today. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Any more questions? Any more requests? Could be a healing request, could be a quote like Adriana. I love that quote. I'm glad that made sense. I have to forget about quotes. <clears throat> All right, let's do up a song. Let's get a fun song going for us. My uh, Patreon, if you want to, you want to join. Yeah. 
No, I did not. All right. So if you want to be a Patreon prospector, there's different membership uh, from two twenty two to eleven eleven dollars a month. So and then my uh, Diamond Hub Diamond Hub subscribers are just four dollars ninety nine cents. So less than a cup of coffee. And then remember, um, hiccups means someone's thinking about you, Mark. Okay, I love it. Thank you for that. Um, and then remember, the first Friday of every month, if you're one of my subscribers, just a reminder, there are free sessions um, via the Zoom room uh, that you can get that link either through Patreon or through Diamonds Hub. First Friday of every month, which is coming up. So the next Friday will be July 5th. Uh, we'll be doing uh, live readings um, at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you can't make that, then I do a three o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Those links are in the, um, to the Zoom. It won't be public here. It'll be uh, just a Zoom room that you can get access to if you're a member uh, through the Diamonds Hub or through the Patreon Prospectors. So great way to get some guidance or some healing, uh, spend, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's cheap uh, compared to what, you know, if you're booking a reading with me at markmainheart.com. So, okay. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions come through. Again, last call. If I missed you, I apologize. Sometimes I don't see all the comments real time. That's the algorithm based on Facebook and technology. But what you can do if I miss, if for some reason I did miss you, don't take it personally. Just uh, type in bump with a star. So a little star, you're bumping your comment down is what you're doing. Bump it with your comment again or your question, and then I can get to you. And that, that way I can try to get to everybody. Sometimes we have slow days in the summer, it slows down. We don't have a lot of people in the fall. It usually picks up. We can get anywhere from five to 30 people. That's fine. I'm here regardless on Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for Metaphysical Meetup with Mark. All right. Let me cue up some music and we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. Sound collection. I think we'll uh, close with Make It Your Moment by Jonna Bell. All my music is trademarked, copyright free, uh, approved by Meta. So if it's here on Meta, it's approved. It's on YouTube, it's approved. Uh, sometimes I get copyright claims, but nothing to violate. Uh, so I think we're going to do Make It Your Moment with John Jenna Bell. That was the artist. And then uh, I opened up the, um, the show with Better Place by Peter McConnell. So I like to promote people, you know, especially if they're providing their work and their inspiration, their music for us to, to enjoy. And uh, we'll call that a day, make it your moment. So until our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate, um, be that free thinker that I talked about. You know, a, a free thinker is always gonna appear crazy to those that haven't prospected deeper. So keep evolving and never apologize for moving past other people's comfort zones, what I would say for today's message. So have a great rest of your Friday, Friday, uh, a great rest of your weekend, and I'll see you next time here on Metaphysical Meetup with Mark Live. And uh, we'll see you over on the airwaves of For Inspired Living, uh, wherever you get your favorite podcasting shows. And we'll see you next time. Namaste. Namago.
be hard days, and there'll be some days you want to throw the towel in. All that it takes is only one break, and they'll be wondering why they ever doubt it. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, Please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector.